Welcome to Film Riot. Today we're talking about a few things. First of all, I'm going to talk about tragedy. The tragedy that struck in our office today. Uh, we found a roach. I hate roaches more than almost anything on this planet. And it wasn't just a roach. You could have put a saddle on this thing. I probably, if it wasn't the most vile, disgusting, moving thing in existence, I could have rode this thing off into the sunset. It could have been like a scene from Lord of the Rings where I'm going to help Frodo and I have my sword and we're charging into the depths because the thing was like, it was a Buick. It, it wasn't a roach, it was a Buick. And finding it kind of went like this. <laughs> Luckily, Josh was at the office uh, today because it is Memorial Day and everybody's off work. But Josh is at the office. Eris was too. He was the first one to find it. But luckily, Josh was there to kill it because God knows I'm not going anywhere near it. So Josh took a poster tube of doom and attacked the thing, which to me kind of looked like this. <laughs> So it's dead, but I don't know if that means there's more. Now I just feel like I'm in a scene from Aliens where I got the little thing and I'm like, "There's, we missed something, there's something in the plans, and I need to set up Gatling guns to keep this thing from getting anywhere near my office. Because I just feel like things are crawling on me. You know what I'm talking about. Don't act like you don't. But speaking of aliens, which that thing absolutely was, there is a behind the scenes video uh, from Alien Covenant where Adam Savage went on set and looked at how Ridley Scott likes to use sound live while in production. So they'll put inner ear speakers and what have you uh, with the actors for him to pipe in stuff like alarms going off or the sound of an alien. It's not the final sound that they use, but it's a sound that evokes an emotion in the act, sometimes music, sometimes the sound of birds. So he has someone on set specifically for that to be piping that stuff in and I just think that's absolutely brilliant and I want to do it. I mean there has been times uh, where I have played music on set to sort of get people into the vibe but I don't think I've ever done it while recording and he's been doing this back since Alien for as far as I know. I know in Alien in that final scene where Ripley is going to leave and she discovers the alien still on the ship, he actually played music during that scene for her to react to so they had to redub later and and I just think that's such a brilliant thing to do, and I definitely want to try it. But check out that video. There's a lot more to it than just that. You can find the link down below. Moving on again, DJI just released New Drone, which is the DJI Spark, which is underneath the Mavic. So now you have the granddaddy with the Inspire. Underneath that, you have the Phantom. Underneath that, you have the Mavic. And now the Spark. And the Spark looks pretty amazing. It's basically the size of your hand. It can only do 1080 at up to 30p and 24 megabits per second, whereas the Mavic can do 4K at 30p with 60 megabits bits per second. So the video quality is definitely a lot better with the Mavic, but the Mavic is about $1,000 and the Spark is $500. What I find really interesting about the Spark is how small it is and how you can just put it in your pocket and go. It, also, the controller is your phone. So you get the app on your phone and you control it right on your phone. So it's both your monitor and the joystick to control the drone. You can also control it without your iPhone at all and just hand gestures. The thing can recognize your face and then as you do hand gestures, you can move the drone around and have it create video or pictures just by how you move your hands, which is pretty amazing. And everything I've seen from it so far looks like it works really well. And the video quality is not bad at all. So I could definitely see this as something that I just keep in a backpack and keep with me at all times so I can just uh, snap off a shot if I need to. And again, it does have that really small form factor. So it'll be really good for a whole lot of things. Again, the quality is nowhere near what you're going to get from the Mavic and above but I think it definitely has a place in your roster of drones, especially if you're just trying to get into it. I mean, $500 is a whole lot easier to spend than $1,000 and above. So check out the links below for more on that, and I'm definitely going to get my hands on it to do a review eventually. And the last thing is what I'm calling birth year movies. I don't know if somebody has done this before. I'm sure somebody has, but I tweeted it out already. It's just what movies came out during your birth year. For me, that was 1982. So for me, it was E.T., uh, Blade Runner, The Thing, Pulitzer, 
Poltergeist, The Wrath of Khan, 48 Hours, Tootsie, and a bunch more. First Blood was another one that came out during my birth year. So I tweeted that out with the hashtag birth year movie. So go check that out and tweet to me what yours were. It's, I just think it was a really interesting thing to look at. And as I was doing it and just flipping through the different movies that came out, there was this golden age for sure of movies that was happening in the late 70s, early to mid 80s. We were getting some unbelievably iconic films every single year. And we still do. But it was interesting to see the shift over time and how, what movies were the most popular uh, from year to year, even to where we're at now. Because, you know, as we all know, now the, the biggest budget movies, the most popular movies are franchised movies, not uh, original properties. We still get those. And there's a ton of original movies, but those aren't the ones that Hollywood's spending the most money on. And as I've said a million times, that's our fault. They're making what we go and pay for at the box office. So I guess that's kind of my passion plea once again, to spend more money on the original films. Let the big franchise movies die at the box office. Watch them later when they come to streaming. And hopefully Hollywood will start getting the point and make more brand new original films. Let artists come up with crazy ideas again. There's nothing more discouraging than having a pile of overdue paperwork just sitting there staring at you while you try to work or do anything you enjoy at all. Well, our friends at FreshBooks now have cloud accounting software that will give you more time to do the work you love and not get bogged down by the paperwork demon. FreshBooks has been redesigned from the ground up and custom built for the way that you work. It's the easiest way to be more productive, organized, and most importantly, get paid quickly. The all new FreshBooks is not only ridiculously easy to use, it's also packed full of powerful features. Create and send professional looking invoices in less than 30 seconds, set up online payments with just a couple of clicks, and get paid up to 40 faster. See when your client has seen your invoice and put an end to the guessing games. And right now, FreshBooks is offering a 30-day unrestricted free trial, which you can get by going to freshbooks.com forward slash Film Riot and enter Film Riot in the How Did You Hear About Us section. Logo. So that's it for today. But before we get into what I'm watching, we have a coupon code for you guys for 25% off of any hit film products. As you know, we just did uh, Westworld to Yuma with hit film. Uh, so we also got that coupon code for you guys. They make a bunch of great stuff. So if you want to switch up to pro or if you want to, that's my mic. Yeah, no, that's my mic. Thank you. <laughs> or if you want to get some of their plugins, you can use our coupon code, which you can see down below. We also have a link down below for you guys to go. We do get a little bit of, was that cool? Oh, really? We do get a little kickback from that as well. So it does help us out so we can keep doing the show, keep doing cooler products. So definitely check that out because I got some great stuff. But now for what I'm watching, I'm watching two things recently. Recently, I've just got into Newsroom, which I know I'm very late to the game, but it's Aaron Sorkin, which means the dialogue is absolutely amazing. And it's way funnier than I thought it was going to be. I wasn't expecting that. And then because I've been obsessed with the whole Alien franchise, again, thanks to Alien Covenant, I've been re-watching the Alien director commentaries and if you buy it on iTunes it comes with two commentaries one from 1999 and one from 2003 the 1999 is just Ridley Scott 2003 is Ridley Scott Sigourney Weaver pretty much the entire cast producer and Dan O'Bannon it's really great it cuts between them they're not all in the same room and there's a lot of great info and if you don't watch directors commentaries you absolutely should be it's another way of getting sort of film school information. These directors are unhinged and they're more honest than they are in pretty much any interview. It seems like it's something cathartic for them to do. <laughs> you okay down there? So the stuff that they say is really great. So just pick your favorite movie, see if it has a commentary and watch it. You'll get some golden nuggets in there. And until next week, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat. Right? <laughs>